Writing and naming covalent compounds is an important skill to have in chemistry. I'm gonna go through the easiest way to do this. First thing you're gonna to have to do though is write down the rules for writing and naming covalent compounds. Second thing is to write down the prefixes. You may even have to memorize these prefixes. The last thing that you're gonna to have to be able to do is recognize what kind of atoms bond to make covalent compounds. They are the non-metals on the periodic, periodic table and they are also a few metalloids. However, the diatomic seven elements of nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and hydrogen are not compounds. They are made up of only two atoms of the same type, so they're just named as elements. All right, lastly, there's no ions, so if you've used an ion sheet for naming ionic compounds, you won't need it. My students have a, a set of notes where they have the rules inside and they already have the formula. They can also compare that to the ionic compounds and examples, which I have a video on if you need that. And binary and oxy, same thing, they have the rules inside and examples. So they have a set of rules for all possible chemical nomenclature uh, that we'll have to do in chemistry. All right, so here we go, let's get started. So these are our first examples, so write those down if you need to, pause the video. I'm just gonna start going through the answers to these. First one, carbon dioxide is one carbon and two oxygens. The second element that's a nonmetal is written like it's an ion, but it's not an ion. And then there's prefixes used to denote the number of atoms in that formula. The first element in this is never listed as mono. However, you can use mono in the second one. If we would have had more than one carbon, we would have needed a prefix at the beginning. All right, next one. CO is gonna be called carbon monoxide. So there's where you do need to use mono, meaning one oxygen. You do not need to say monocarbon, that is uh, not correct. Silicon dioxide is SiO2, so two oxygens, one silicon. BF3 is called boron trifluoride. Three is the prefix tri, so three fluorines called fluorides. Again, they're not ionic though and then one boron. Last but not least, carbon tetra. Tetra is four, so you'd say CCL4. There's the first set. We're gonna do two more sets. Here we go. So I'm gonna list out the uh, examples. You write them down and you can even try to do the answers before I do, so here's your next set. All right, here we go. So you can pause the video if you'd like and try them on your own. First one is dinitrogen trioxide. So there's where we do need a prefix because there were two nitrogens and then three again for the oxygen as called oxide. Next, this one is sulfur dioxide, one sulfur, two oxygen. Sulfur hexafluoride, that's a new prefix we haven't used yet. That means six, so it's sulfur and six fluorine called fluorides. Last, almost here on this list is dihydrogen monoxide. You're gonna say, wait, isn't that what is called water? You're right, that is water, it's got a common name. However, the appropriate name using covalent naming rules is dihydrogen monoxide. Don't get worried, that's what it is. Last but not least, your last one is chlorine pentafluoride. I'm not sure if we've had penta yet. That's five, so chlorine and then pentafluoride because there's five fluorides. All right, almost done. One more set, here we go. Here's the first one. There's that one. Oop, not that. Then we got this one. And last but not least, that one. All right, so here we go. These are our last set. So how do you name the first one? Or write the formula, I should say. So it's Cl2O, so dichlorine monoxide. We always need a prefix for the second one. And then you would use di, tri, et cetera, if you have more than one of the first one. Then you have this molecule called nitrogen trihydride. You might also recognize it by its common name, which is just ammonia. So that's a little bit like water, how it had a common name. Carbon uh, tetrahydride, that also has a common name that is called methane, which leads into a whole other branch of chemistry called organic chemistry. These are simple covalent molecules. So, or compounds, so we don't name them like they're organic chemistry molecules, but you might have to later on. Next one is if this is um, a gas, you'd name it hydrogen monofluoride. There is another common name for it, they'll just call it hydrogen fluoride. However, 
if you dissolve this in water, it would turn into an acid and you'd name it as a binary acid called hydrofluoric acid. So this is our last set. I want to throw a couple harder ones in there. If it was dissolved in water, you name it as an acid. If it wasn't, you just name it as a covalent compound. And a lot of people will not put the mono, they'll just call it the hydrogen fluoride. Last but not least, remember, the diatomics, we don't change their name, we don't use prefixes. You just say fluorine is the diatomic molecule and that's its name, okay? I just kind of have some examples of molecules on the side here, not that they match up with any of these, but that's maybe where you're going after this is to do Vesper structures. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, and good luck, chemists.